Welcome back to the Crochet Credits. Also my friends over at Yarnspirations.com and special welcome to Sarah from Repeat Crafter Me. So the Valentine Bear is something that we have done earlier this year in 2020 and it's a pattern by Sarah from Repeat Crafter Me of course. And what it was is it was a pink bear and then I had a heart right in the center here and it was really quite cute. She's come up with the new version that is actually the exact same pattern but with a slight twist to it. There's no heart on the front and she just added some colorful buttons to make it the gingerbread bear. So she just got some of these components on Amazon. You may be able to find them in your local craft store. She also crocheted the main body with the color mushroom and then just used white and this is Bernat velvet yarn in order to do that. So where the difference is of the original is actually just within two rounds within the arms here and within the feet. So within the arms the difference is is that rounds number five and six will be white as you will see and in the feet it'll be rounds number eight and nine that will be white as well and that's pretty much the only difference that is existing. So it's a really great idea. So in this tutorial today I am going to play for you the Valentine version. Again it's the exact same instructions but just substitute the information and also you can find this free pattern if you just click to the more information of this video or see our comments in order to see that. So good luck and enjoy your new gingerbread bear. Have a good one. Bye bye. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We'd also like to welcome our friends over at Repeat Crafter Me. Hey this is a Sarah design from Repeat Crafter Me. I love this bear. It is so cute. You know you really need to check out Repeat Crafter Me. Her designs are just fabulous. She's one of my favorite designers and uh, I think that she just knows how to take something that's ordinary, make it extraordinary and you can enjoy your project at the end. So today's project we are going to do this mini bear and this is her daughter Zoe in behind here and you can see that this bear is actually not as big as you thought. So when I was really looking at this last year 2019 I thought oh it's such a big bear do I have the time and now that I'm doing it um, the advanced uh, prep work I'm realizing this bear is actually not so big at all. So I have a choice to make and I will tell you about that in just a sec. The thing about making tutorials is that you know sometimes this yarn is kind of hard to see the actual stitch work but I'm gonna stick with the actual yarn. I'm gonna use Bernat Baby Velvet for this color here and this is called Bunny Brown and I'm gonna use that for the, the lighter color pink and then I'm gonna use this other beautiful color. This is Crushed Velvet for the body of the bear and so if I can just show you a piece of the bear that I'm working on here. Um, I've just done an arm so you can see in the Crushed Velvet it looks really quite cool so it looks really quite elegant. So when I run tutorials like this people will say well you know you should have used the yarn that it was recommended just to prove that it will work. And so then other people say you shouldn't use the yarn that it was prescribed because it's too hard to see the stitches. I'm gonna use the yarn that's prescribed here. It's actually doable and um, I'm gonna recommend to you to use stitch markers uh, throughout this thing. This pattern really is not a big pattern in order to accomplish today. So to, without further ado we're going to be using a five millimeter size H crochet hook but I'm going to substitute and make my hook a four millimeter size G hook so that my bear is a little bit tighter and a little bit smaller. You're also gonna need some polyfill. You're going to need some eyes today and the eyes here are nine millimeter and they have a safety backing on it. So once this is in position you put on the washer, clip it in and it's good to go. There's also a, what is called as a safety nose and so this is the nose and there's also a washer for that and so when you're ready to put it on you just clip it on. These are called safety because they're very very difficult um, to get off so it's a one time placement pretty much. Um, you pretty much have to cut it out of your bear if you need to remove it. So it's one of those things that you need to be very specific about. So without further ado I'm going to work on this pattern in order the way that Sarah has written it here and uh, we're gonna start off with the body today and we're gonna get ourselves started, get a stitch marker. In my case I'm just gonna use some spare yarn in order to play today. So let's begin the body of the bear. So I'm going to be using soft gray as my crushed velvet color for the main color. So you're gonna ask me that's what it is. So we're gonna start off in the instructions here. So you are going to slip stitch between every round so it's not one of those continuous um, amigurumi where we keep going in a circle uh, like a spiral. We are going to be slip stitching and so we just have to get the first section done. So it's rounds number one through 19. There is some really easy parts here in order to have the growth. So we're gonna be doing the body section here and it almost looks like the shape of a pineapple. So let's uh, begin. Grab your uh, five millimeter or your four millimeter whatever size that you wanna use today and your yarn and let's begin to play. 
So we're gonna start off today and we're gonna use what is called as a magic loop and uh, there's tutorials available for that. I will show it one time here. You will be using it throughout this whole project so it's not a hard thing to do. So what you need to do and the reason why you wanna do it is it creates a nice tight uh, close. So just create an extra long tail here just so you see and lay it in the front of your hand like this. Okay, now this is uh, the yarn is leading towards the yarn ball so just bring it up over your two fingers and cross over. So it's crossing over the back of your two fingers. Now I just want you just to go underneath the first one and scoop the second one and pull up. And carefully just slide your fingers out of that loop. So when you go to crochet this now you wanna crochet over the loop plus over top of the strand that is leading to the end of the ball. And when you're done you're gonna pull that strand so that it pulls it shut. Remember there's other tutorials that have this as well. So we're going to begin and we are just going to chain one and that will lock your loop. Okay, so you make sure you crochet over the two strands as you're doing this. If you crochet over just one then it won't close. So let's begin. We're gonna do round number one. We're gonna just do ten single crochets into the magic loop. So let's count those out together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now before you go any further what I'm recommending to you is that you use your stitch marker. So just pull up a little bit larger loop and just slip your hook underneath the last stitch and then just grab some spare yarn or a stitch marker and just pull through there so that you can identify that. Cause it's fluffy yarn it's harder to see. So what I want you to do now is pull the strand that is leading to the end of the ball and this will pull everything nice and tight. And pull it nice and tight so that you cannot see an opening in the center. And then turn it over and using your tapestry needle you are going to want to slip this in behind. So if you leave it as is and just cut it it's gonna open up because there's nothing locking it in place. So people do magic circles and loops and stuff and they don't close it and therefore the project ends up falling apart. So in here what you wanna do is that you wanna jump across to the other side of the circle just stay on the back side and pull through one time. Go through a different spot in the other direction for a second time and then going back through the third time and you'll do that every time. So every time there's a magic loop here today um, this is exactly what you'll do and I won't be so um, slow about showing you at this point. So if you get anything looped in, oh that's the loop that I want. <laughs> I was like what is that extra strand? So there we go. So that's the loop. So I've gone back and forth three times. I can safely now cut it down into the project and I don't have to worry about that falling out. So let's turn it back over and let's put that loop back on the hook. And before you uh, finish this section I want you to join it to the very beginning one. So just slip stitch to pull through. Okay. So let's begin round number two. Now when I was practicing this I put the stitch marker in the last stitch of the round. Uh, just remember that. So let's begin second round. So you're gonna chain up one to begin and one um, each stitch is going to get two single crochets in it. So what I would do is go one and one. So there's two in the first one and then two and two. It's a way of keeping count. And then the next one is three and three and then four and four, five and five, six and six, seven and seven and eight and eight and then nine and nine. And then finally in the end it's ten. So that's where the stitch marker is. It's ten and ten. And before I move anything further 
what I wanna do is that I wanna move that stitch marker up to the last one. So just pull it through and we'll hold it there so that you'll see it next time in the future. And if you don't need stitch markers then don't bother. But then just slip stitch it to join it to the first single crochet. Beautiful isn't it? Let's begin round number three. So now that we started you off nice and slow I'm going to give you the instructions then to complete these rounds. So for round number three it's just one stitch. So just chain up one and it's one stitch in each. So if you remember from the last time we just put in 20 single crochets because it was two into each. So what I would recommend to you is that you just count it as you're going around. It's not a big deal to do. So just it's one single crochet in each. So I would count to 20 if it were if I were you and you were me. So just one, two, and three and just keep on going around and make sure that there's 20 and then join it with the slip stitch to begin then round number four and we'll see you there in just a moment. So my last one is number 20 I have been counting because I usually do what I say. <laughs> when I ask you to do something I usually do it myself because that's what I'm telling you. So I'm moving the stitch marker and then I'm gonna join it then to the beginning single crochet then to start round number four. Let's begin round number four. Chain up one and here's the repeat. So you're gonna put two single crochets into the first one to get ourselves started. And the repeat's gonna start from this next one. So it's gonna be one single crochet into the next and then there's going to be two single crochets into the next one after that. That's your repeat. Okay, so it's going to be one single crochet in the next and then two single crochets in the next one after that. Okay, so keep doing that all the way around and the very last stitch will just have one single crochet in there. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So it's two and one, two and one, etc. When you get all the way around the last one is one single crochet and we're just keeping in count with the pattern and then I want you to move the stitch marker up. That was round number um, four. There should be 30 stitches in the circle and then just join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with. So now let's begin round number five through eleven. Now rounds number five through eleven are all the same. So I'm just gonna show it to you just one time. So you're just gonna chain up one and it's just gonna be one single crochet into the first one and then one into each of them and then just join it back. So you should know that there is 30 stitches in the circle if you wanna count those as you're going. So essentially there's um, a total of seven rounds of that. So it's rounds number five through eleven to do that. What I would do is just go around and then just check it off. So now that I've chained one I'm just gonna go in one single crochet in each. You're gonna notice that it will continue to grow just a little bit before then stabilizing off then to kind of create um, a kind of a, a bowl shape that you want. So you can either count it if you wish. If you trust yourself then that's great. So just uh, seven rounds of one single crochet in each and I'll see you at the end of that on the end of round number 11. So rounds number five through 11 are done. This is what it looks like. As you can see it's not a very big bear. So we're now going to move to round number 12 and we're going to do a decrease. So we're gonna just chain up one and put the first two together. So just going into the first one. So pull up a loop and then go to the second one pull up a loop and you have three loops on the hook, pull through all three loops. So that was a two together, single crochet two together. You're now going to then single crochet in the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And then the next two are together. So I'm using my th uh, fingers from behind. You can actually feel the stitches if you can't physically see them but I can actually see them as well. So put two together and then four um, in the next. So one, two, three, four and then two together. Please do that all the way around and um, that is gonna be pretty awesome and I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number 12. Coming up to the end of round number 12 the last four will be one single crochet each and that's just a matter of keeping the right count. So there's no uh, special counting required. So just move up your stitch marker if it helps you and then just join it to the very first one which is a two together single crochet. Let's move on now to round number 13. It's the same as round number three which is just a single crochet round. So this time uh, you should know that there's only 25 stitches in the circle. So just chaining up one and then single crochet the next 25 which is the number of stitches that are left and then slip stitch it to the beginning. So let's continue this. Round number 13, one single crochet in each. Total of 25 stitches all around. I'm just in the end of round number 13. I'm just moving this up. I did get my 25 in like I thought I would. It's just a matter of keeping count and then just join it to the beginning to move up. So round number 14 we're gonna do another decrease. So we're just gonna chain up one and single crochet the first two together. 
and then it's gonna be three in a row by themselves. So one, two, and three, and then two together. And we're gonna continue to do that all the way around. So please do that all the way around. So two together and then three in a row, two together, three in a row for round number 14. Coming up to the end of round number 14, I'm just joining it to the first one. So round number 15 is just a single crochet round. So there will only be uh, 20 stitches in the circle. So just chaining up one and it's one single crochet in each and there's a total of 20. So let's continue to do that round number 15. So one more decrease and then we just have then uh, a few more rounds then of just regular uh, single crochet. So one more decrease, it's round number 16. Just chaining up one and you're going to put the first two together. So one and two and this time it will be two, sorry one single crochet in the next two stitches. So two, so one and two and then put the next two together and then the next two are by themselves. So one and two. Please do that all the way around. This is round number 16. Okay, the final two stitches are just regular single crochet and that's just a matter of keeping the count, nothing special. And then I'm just moving up the stitch marker. So I have three more rounds to go. They're all just regular uh, single crochets. There's no growth or no um, subtraction at all. And this is leading up to the neck of the character. So just joining it. And so this time rounds number 17, 18 and 19, there's only gonna be 15 single crochets in a row. So just continuing up. So chain up one and then just it's 15 single crochets in a round. So just keep a count of those and please do all three rounds and then we're gonna stuff and then leave this for later and uh, we will then move on to another part of the body. So there's 15 single crochets in a row in each of the next three rounds. So just come to the end of round number 19 and I am just going to just pull through the loop. I've already cut it off camera and I wanna leave a long uh, strand here so that I can sew and I can also pull out my stitch marker at this point. You can almost hardly even tell where this uh, slip stitching line is, it's perfect. So what I wanna do is that I wanna grab my stuffing and just start stuffing it nice and firm uh, here and you can see that it's a nice teardrop uh, shape that you have. So let's uh, get the stuffed and let's move on in this tutorial. So I've now stuffed it. I can think about the firmness later but it's actually pretty firm and I'm just thinking if this is the body and it has to sit. So I'm now then ready to move on in the pattern. So let's uh, put this aside and let's move on. So for the next part of the tutorial, we're going to need the safety nose. You can also uh, just embroider a nose or you can also just do a little thing, something with crochet and do it if you don't trust uh, the safety pro uh, product. So that's something that you can decide for yourself. So we're gonna start the snout next. So on the instructions here, the snout is only three rounds that we're about to do and then we're just going to create a chain and then kind of create an oval kind of shape and we'll figure out that as we go. So let's make the snout We're using the other color that you see in the pattern. So let's begin to do the snout and we are just gonna do a regular starting. So just a slip knot to begin. And I would recommend the stitch marker as well for this. So let's begin and we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. So now that you have your five in here, let's do first round. We're gonna do one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one and two and just go to the second and just get the back hump only. We're gonna go completely around this chain. So we're gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then it says one single crochet in each of the next two chains. So continuing along the chain just in the back hump only. So just one single crochet in the next one and one in the other and that only leaves one chain left. In the final chain here, it says that we need to put two single crochets in the next chain. So that's the back hump of the last one that's here. But we're not quite done. We need to rotate into a circle. So just continually turning this. So now we're gonna go on the underside of the circle. So we're going to then one single crochet in each of the next three. So starting in the first one. So it's just three in a row. So it's gonna be one, two, and three like that and then there's gonna be uh, in the last one here there's going to be two single crochets. Noticing that I went up over top of the straggler to keep it in position. So one and two and then I'm going to join it to the very first one that I started with which is right here. There should be total of ten single crochets in a circle and what I'm probably recommending if you want to just get a stitch marker and mark the very last one that you did not the 
not the slip stitch but the very last one and then you can keep an eye on that as well. So this is the first round. There should be 10 single crochets in a circle and let's continue then into round number two. Round number two, beautiful, easy. So what you need to do is that you just need to chain up one and it's gonna be one, uh, two single crochets in each of the stitches going around. So if you have 10 in there now, there will be a total of, of 20 when, by the time you're done. So I just did two into the first one, so one and two. So then I can go and say in the next one like I did with the before. So I can say two and two because that's the second one stitch and then three and three and then the next one is four and four and five and five, six and six, seven and seven, eight and eight, nine and nine, and that's where the stitch marker is in the last one. So it'll be 10 and 10. So it's two into each. So that means that there's definitely 20 in there. So we're just gonna slip stitch to the very first one that you started with when you started this round. Let's uh, then move on to round number um, three. And if you wanna move up your stitch marker, now's the time to do it. And then we just have one more round to do after this. So the final round, beautiful, is just a uh, chain one and it's one single crochet in each. So that means that there's only 20 stitches around. So one, two, and three and go all the way around. Make sure there's 20. We're gonna fasten off and then your snout is done. It's that quick. Once you get all the way around, just slip stitch to the very first single crochet that you started with and that's it. Leave a long tail. But you'll be sewing this to the face later. But we need to position on our safety knows if you would like to do that now, now's the time to do it. So what you can just do is look at the photograph and see where it roughly is positioned and then you're just, all you're just gonna do is just get the middle section and what I wanna do is that I wanna look at the photo here, see where it is. So it looks like it's on the upper section of the round. So it looks like it's not right in the middle. It looks like it's in between the, um, the first layer and the second. So when I'm looking at it here, it looks like it's right in the middle here just one up like that. So if you're trusting that, remember it's a one time thing only, just turn it over and get the washer on the other side and just snap it into position. So just push through. If you think it's hard to get on, try getting it off. <laughs> and snap it right in. Okay, and then you obviously wanna turn it so it makes sense. And you're good to go. So get rid of everything here, uh, any loose tails that you do have and then you're just gonna use that tail to sew it onto the face later. So let's do that and let's move on in the pattern. So now we're gonna begin the head. So the head is probably the biggest uh, section of them all but that doesn't mean that it's hard. So I just kinda marked in here on what rounds are basically the just single crochet rounds. So you'll see that rounds number six right here is just single crochet all the way around. So the ones that I did here, they're just single crochet so it's just a matter of keeping count in order to just make sure you do the rounds as is. So you can see when you take that out, you just see that there's a few growth and then there's a big section of just single crochets and then we start decreasing then. So we're looking kind of like for a balloon or a ball shape as we're making our way around. Also going to need your safety eyes as we get close uh, here at the end of round number 19 and uh, just to take a look at that and uh, the round number 19 is that that's kind of when you wanna put on your eyes because then you're gonna have to start closing this up so that it's completely shut and stuffed at the very top. So let's uh, begin round number um, one and we're gonna start off with a magic loop. I've already shown you uh, slowly how to do that and I'm just gonna start off a little bit quicker this time for round number one for the head. So let's begin to do our head and we're just gonna create our magic circle that we have. Once you get used to the, doing these kind of ideas, it gets easier. So we have our magic circle now ready and we're going to put eight single crochets in the magic circle. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and as I did before put in your stitch marker so that you can identify it. If you don't feel you need to then don't. And 
and then you're just gonna take the strand that's leading towards the end just to pull it so that it forms the circle. And once you're happy with that then you're just gonna turn it over in the back and then just secure it with your tapestry needle. Please do that now. Once you've got everything secured in the back side if you're not sure where the eighth one is away just count it back from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight like this. Because it's nice and fluffy yarn you can also fake it too if you really really had to if you can't see it. That's kind of a neat idea. So let's uh, begin and let's move on now to round number two. Round number two we're just gonna chain up one and it's gonna be two single crochets in each of the eight. So I go one in one and then two and two three and three four and four five and five six and six and then seven and seven and then the last one here eight and eight. Move up my stitch marker and then slip stitch it to the beginning one and then that will conclude then round number two. Let's begin round number three. We're gonna do a growth so just chain up one and we're gonna put two single crochets in the first one. So one and two and then the next one is gonna be one by itself. So just one. So here's the repeat for the whole thing. So you're just gonna put two into the next. So one and two and then the one after that is just one. So please do that all the way around. This is round number three. When you get all the way around then it's just one single crochet into the last one and that's just a matter of keeping the count but it also states that as well. And then just move up your stitch marker and then join it to the beginning one that you'd started with. Let's move on now to round number four. Round number four, another growth round. So just chain up one and there's gonna be two into the first one. So one and two. Then the next two in a row are by themselves. So one and two by themselves. Okay, so here's the repeat pattern. So there's gonna be two into the next and then the next two are by themselves. So one and two. Please do that all the way around. This is round number four. So I'm just coming all the way around on the end of round number four. Let's begin round number five. It's another growth round. So you're just gonna chain up one and two single crochet in the first one. So one and two and now this time it's gonna be three in a row that are by themselves. So one, two, three. Okay, so that's gonna be two in this next one. So one and two and then three by themselves. Please do this all the way around for round number five. So I'm just coming out to the end of round number five. So rounds number six through thirteen that's a total of eight rounds are all the same now. It's just a matter of grow, uh, keeping it all the same. So just chain up one. This one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. There's a total count of forty stitches if you wanna keep counts up to you. So just uh, just one single crochet in each and then just slip stitch when you get back around and then just keep on moving up and check it off on your list. So rounds number six through thirteen it's just one single crochet in each going all the way around. Okay, so I'm back. Now I have rounds number six through thirteen done. So you can see it's a beautiful bowl shape and now we're gonna start decreasing down. So let's uh, begin round number fourteen. So fourteen we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna put the first two together. So two single crochets together. We did this on the, the body as well. And then we're gonna do one single crochet in the next three. So one, two and three. Okay, so the repeat pattern is two together and then the next three are by themselves. So one, two and three and this is round number fourteen. Please do that all the way around and I'll see at the end. Okay, I've just come up to the last one and just gonna slip stitch and my stitch counts are perfect so far. So let's begin round number fifteen. It's just chain one and one single crochet in each of the rounds. So then there's only thirty two stitches going around now that we've done our first decrease. So just count those out to make sure you got it right and then I'll see at the end of this one. So one single crochet in each and there's a total of thirty two round are the stitches going in the round. Round number sixteen we're gonna do another decrease. So just chain up one and we're gonna put the first two together and then the next two are by themselves. So one and two. So the repeat then for this round is to put two together and then two by themselves. Please do that round for round number sixteen. 
Round number 16 is complete. Now let's do round number 17. Chain up one, one single crochet into each. There is a total of 24 stitches in the round. Please do that and just make sure you get your right count. So this is three so far. 24 is all the way around and I'll see you at the end of the round number 17. So round number 18 we're gonna do a decrease and then 19 is just a regular single crochet around and then we're gonna start applying the snout to this uh, and then we're gonna start lightly stuffing in order to get ourselves into the position that we need to be in. So round number 18 is just uh, chain up one and one single crochet and sorry two single <laughs> two together single crochet. So put the first two together and then one by itself. Okay so two together and then one by itself. Please do that all the way around. This is round number 18 and I'll see you at the end of this round. Round number 19 let's begin and, and then we're gonna start playing this fun stuff later. So chain up one and one single crochet in each of the stitches going around. There's a total of 16 single crochets and then we're gonna hold there for a moment and then we're gonna then apply the nose and etc. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So one single crochet in each going all the way around and there's a total of 16 stitches all together. So once you get all the way around just slip stitch it to the beginning and I'm gonna move up my stitch marker and I want to begin doing the snout work and st start lightly stuffing. So I wanna stuff this so I can get the idea of the shape and then also orientation. I can see where I've done my stitch markers. So I may wanna put that on the back so I have a nice clean face as well. So let's uh, get our stuffing and let's start stuffing this and let's get our nose ready as well which is the snout patch. So using the photograph I want to uh, put on the snout. So there's some lightly stuffing behind it. So I wanna make sure I stuff it as I'm going. One thing I like to do is that you gotta look at the positioning of where this is. So you can see it's not just halfway up on the on the head. It's actually just slightly down. So it's probably around from the bottom section here. So in order for me not to be paranoid as it's as I'm putting it together I like to actually just attach it and I like just to put some stitch markers in. So <laughs> kind of reminds me of a seal at this moment. So what I want to do is that I want it just going in and just grabbing a section of it and then just pulling it a stitch marker through and I'm going to just tie it. This is how I do my stuff so I don't get, once you start sewing it gets really kind of tough. So just tie and then just kind of look at the orientation and then get the one down below. You know when you put things in eyes everything on angles it actually gives expression so it's not necessarily a bad thing if you're not perfect. I certainly can't do this perfect as well so I'm not even gonna pretend that I can. <laughs> um, and it's kind of unrealistic for me to say that you know it's perfect it's easy. So once you get the orientation again now you just want the sides. You notice I haven't used any stuffing yet so I don't wanna do that yet. And then I'm just gonna get my sides in here. So now my head has the snout. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So what I want to do then at this point is that I just wanna look carefully. So now what I want to do is I wanna take this strand here, the one that we did that we left on and now we wanna start applying. I'm gonna start stuffing after um, I'm more than halfway around. So just going in to the fabric to the gray and then pop it back out the next section. So stay within the pink area and as you pass the stitch markers you can just safely take those out. Now before we get too far around I wanna make sure I got a little pocket here and I'm going to apply some stuffing. Just a bit, nothing too crazy just to get it to pop. That might be too much. Once I'm satisfied with it all I'm just going to do then is just make sure it just goes into a knot and because it's fluffy it's really easy to hide this thing. So you're just gonna do a knot and then I'm just gonna go in and out of the project in just this color three times. So just once and just carefully just so you don't change the parameters of it. Go a second time and third time. And then what I like to do is then once it's in a third time just go right into the ball itself and then pop it out somewhere else. So you can pop it out to the bottom if you wanted to. So it's completely on the inside and then you can safely get rid of that. And then you can also then at this moment get rid of all of your um, stitch markers 
and now you can position your eyes. So looking back at the photo, looking where the eyes are, so the eyes are probably right around there and they look like they're just a layer up. So what I would do if I were you and you were me, I would just position them in and don't put them on yet. Like as far as like secure them and just make sure that it looks balanced. I just went in between some stitches. Okay, I think they're too close together so I'm just gonna move them out one more on both sides. So once you're happy with it, just take your washer like you did with your safety nose and just get access to it from behind and snap your washers into position. You can, you can feel it going on. And then just shape your head accordingly. So there is the head done. So now we're going to move on and we're gonna finish off this neck area. And let's continue then from round number uh, 19 and we're just still gonna lightly stuff but then we're gonna restuff then right at the end as we're fastening it on as we're putting everything together. So this is what it looks like so far. Let's continue then into round number 20. So just two more rounds left. Round number 20 and 21. So 20 you're just gonna chain one and then just simply just go into the first two and put those together and then one into the next. So one by itself. So just remember that it's two together and then one by itself. Please do that all the way around. This is round number uh, 20 and there should be only 12 stitches at the end. So before you do the final round here, round number 21, you wanna make sure that this is stuffed firm. You cannot stuff any beyond this one here. So what I wanna do is just now make sure it's a little too squishy for my taste. Take your body that you've already got it and try to get the same uh, feel to it. So keep stuffing and then eventually it'll come together like so. So let's uh, continue to stuff this. Let's do the final round. Now that it's stuffed it's actually pretty um, it's pretty good. Um, okay so it's got bounce back and it doesn't lose its shape. So let's uh, continue final round number 21. Chain up one and then put the first two together and then put every two together. So just single crochet together and then put the next two together and then what you're going to do at the end of this is that you're gonna pull up a long loop and then collect all the stitches and then pull everything tightly so then it will close off the bottom hole of the head. So you, that's why you need to make sure your stuffing is in position at this time because you can't do any more at this point. So you're just going all the way around just collecting it like so. Okay, so now I want to take this long tail that's left and I just wanna use my tapestry needle and just circle it back around all the exposed loops. So you can see that there's still a small little hole here. So what you wanna do is just kinda wanna kinda close line it together. This particular stuffing that I have is uh, from Joanne actually and uh, it's interesting it's called uh, the original polyfill premium polyester. It, it's interesting how that the polyester makes a huge or polyfill makes such a huge difference. This one is a little more firmer than other polys that I've had and because of this I think this shape is actually much better. So once you go all the way around collecting just pull tight and it will close off that hole and then simply just go back and forth. So just tie it once be nice about it like you probably won't see this area anyway because it's gonna get stuck underneath the neck. So tie it and then back and forth a total of three times. So just once, twice to a different path and then finally a third time and what I like to do for myself is that I like to stick it through the ball. So just straight in and then out somewhere else and then I cut it. So just give it, pull it a little bit so it, it causes it to sink in and then when I pull it a bit it'll snap it and pull it back inside the ball. And now you can just shape and it's pretty good. So let's uh, continue on in the pattern. Let's see what we're gonna do next. So we're now going to move on to the arms. You need two of them. I've already done one in advance uh, just because I get my homework done and then you need to lightly stuff it which I haven't done yet. So just uh, at the end of it just gotta lightly stuff it just to make sure that it doesn't uh, go flat on you and then we're just going to attach that later but we wanna do all of our components now so that we can 
do all the final putting together at the end. So let's uh, continue now and just make the arms and that's our next section. So back to the pattern we go and we are just going to do the arms. You can see that it's a pretty short section here but there is a repeat of these arounds here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a total of six of rounds here, nine through fourteen and uh, it's just a matter of just doing one single crochet and just checking it off as you go. If you are doing this I would strongly recommend that you just keep an eye on both of the arms to make sure that the lengths are the same. Nothing's worse than really <laughs> than having something that's gonna be a little bit shorter. Also recommending using a stitch marker so that you can keep an eye on things as well. Let's begin round number one which will start off with the magic loop once again. Okay let's get your arm started and let's do a magic loop. Remember chain one like locks the loop that we have. So inside the loop then we are going to then have ten single crochets. So just count those out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, this is seven, eight, nine, and ten. So using your stitch markers again just to keep an eye on things, put it in and then pull shut and then I need you to secure it like I showed you before. You'll really regret it if you don't. Um, I've seen too many people on uh, Facebook that does a magic loop or something like this and does not. They pull it but then they cut it and they don't realize that there's nothing actually holding it from coming back out. So secure it on the other side and then I will see you starting uh, the next round, round number two through seven. Okay once everything's secured then just slip stitch to the beginning one. So there's ten single crochets in the circle. So rounds number two, three, four, five, six, and seven and you wanna check it off as you go are each one single crochet. So just chaining up one and there's ten single crochets in the circle. So just count those out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten is the last one with the stitch marker. Moving that up and so that's round number two. So I need you to continue to do that then until round number seven. So just slip stitch and then begin again. So just make sure you just flip it out and then just do the next uh, rounds all the way through seven. One single crochet in each, ten single crochets around. So I'm back and now I have my rounds all the way through seven done. So now I'm going to continue then to round number eight and round number eight we want to do a decrease. So we're only gonna decrease by two stitches so we end up with only eight in the round instead of ten. So we're just going to chain up one and we're gonna put single crochet two together and then one single crochet in the next three. So one, two, and three and then we're gonna put the next two together and then the final three are going in. So one, two and three. That takes us all the way around so move up your stitch marker. That was round number eight. Now nine through fourteen is all just single crochet rounds so you can do that on your own. So just uh, make a note of it. So write nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen and fourteen on a piece of paper and check it off as you go. So just chaining up one and then one single crochet in each. So there's only eight. If you wanna start stuffing as you're going it, it's just easier as well. So you please do that. So I'll see you at the end of round number 14 at the end of this one here and leave a long tail in for sewing. So now I have both arms done. I did one in advance and I wanna just feel them to make sure that they kinda have the same thickness going on. Kinda leaving a little bit of extra stuffing out of the top section here just keeping it more like pause. So when I go to sew this to the character it'll look like it, it will make sense. So it'll give me a little more flexibility um, because you wanna kind of have them droop down. So get both of these done and then we're gonna move on to the ears next. So we're now gonna move on to the ears and the ears are just kinda like a little bowl shape and there's no stuffing uh, required for these I don't believe. No it doesn't say to do that. So we're going to just do this. There's only five rounds and again use stitch markers. Um, I actually started my homework with this particular one just to understand this kind of uh, yarn to work with in order to do this kind of concept because I'm used to Afghan work and stuff. So it's kind of a neat idea and we're gonna do two ears of course and you can sew those onto the head if you're comfortable at the end of this section as well. 
So let's begin. We're gonna use a magic loop as we have been in the past. So just pound this out. And for the ears, we're just gonna chain one to start it. And then for the ears, what does it say? It says five single crochets in the magic loop. So one, two, three, four, and five. Mark it with the stitch marker as always. Pull it shut and then secure it and then I'll see you at the next section which will be round number two. I've already slip stitched it now ready for round number two. Chain up one and then there's gonna be two single crochets in each of the five stitches. So I go one and one and two and two, three and three, four and four and then the stitch marker is the last one. So five, and five. Move your stitch marker up and then just slip stitch to the beginning. So that was round number two. Round number three, let's continue along. Chain up one and you're going to do uh, two single crochet into the first one. So one and two and then the next one here that we're gonna do is that we're just gonna do one by itself and then the next one has two and that's the growth for this years. Okay, so it's one and then two into the next and please do that all the way around. This will increase our rounds to 15 stitches if you're keeping count. Coming up to the end of number three and I'm just slip stitching. So in round number four when we start we're going to then just put one single or chain one and one single crochet in each of the stitches. There's 15 all the way around. So just do one single crochet in each going all the way around. This is round number uh, four. Finally the last round we're gonna do a decrease. So just chain up one and you're gonna do the first two together and then one by itself. So two together and one by itself and so this will help it to come into a bowl shape which is what you need. So please do this all the way around. This is round number five and we're almost done the ears at this point. You wanna do two of them. Make sure that they don't, they both look the same as far as sizing and then just continue then just to have a good time. So what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that there is a total of 10 stitches. So one, I think I feel like I'm off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm good and I'm just going to slip stitch and then that will conclude off the ear. So I just want to before I fasten off I just want to grab the other ears. If my first one then I just use it as my template and they both look the same. Therefore I'm good to go. Leave a long tail here and we're gonna sew that on. We're gonna look at the project next and see where we can sew it on and then I'll give you some tips on sewing this the ears on as well. To begin the ears what you can just do is that you just wanna just look at the bear and look at the photograph and you'll notice that the ears are kinda coming down on the side. So where you position them is it kinda gives it a bit of expression and it looks like it's close to the top of the head. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm looking at the positioning of the eyes and it looks like that one kinda starts just up here. So I'm going to just start it here. So I want to just put in a stitch marker just to hold it the position and then I wanna kinda just eye up that and then using this another stitch marker down. And then I wanna kinda match it to the other side of this. So now that my stitch markers are in all I'm just going to do then is just take the one strand through the section of the ear. And what I want to do is that I wanna tie on the ears first. Okay, once you're happy with the ear positioning then what you can just do then is take the long tail and how you do it, something like this is that you wanna secure the ears and anything that you're going to sew on from two sides. So you just don't go through one side and just say it's good because it's gonna fall over. So what I wanna do is that you wanna follow the edge around the ear and then go all the way around and then back. 
so that it's secured on all sides. If you just do one it'll just fall but if you do it on both sides it'll hold it. So you've gotta make sure that your ears are positioned right. Now's the time to do it and as you're moving past the stitch markers you can probably pull those out as well. So just going into the project and staying right underneath the ears and just coming out the first layer of the ears and just go all the way around as a whip stitch and I want you to do that next. Once your ear is on then you just want to secure it from the back side of the ear and just stay on the back only and just make sure that it does eventually tie and then just go in and out of the work a total of three times back and forth. So I'm just gonna put it through so it causes it to just get stuck and then back and forth three times. Stay on the back side of the ear or in the back of the head. So once this yarn is so easy to hide anything. I can see why Sarah chose this yarn. So once it's back and forth three times you can just safely cut it. Now your second ear is the most important one because where you just position this one the second one should be in line and you can see it just naturally wanted to turn like that. So now we're gonna secure the second one and just kind of making sure that it looks good at this point making sure it's forward enough as well. So I'm gonna secure that one and then we'll be back and continue the pattern. Okay so my ears are in position pretty happy with them. You can see it's a little bit more forward on the body and uh, I think that's kind of like that on the original sample too but of course you have to make decisions what matters to you so then that will go on to the body next. So the body is obviously much smaller. It's like a, yeah fabulous. So let's uh, continue then in our pattern and let's see what we're gonna get ourselves into next. So we're gonna get ourselves into the feet next and there's also a tail later. You notice that the feet here it has shaping kind of surprised me a bit. So when it's sitting on the character I think that when we're going to look at it you don't realize that the shaping actually there and is actually pretty neat. So I uh, wanna keep an eye on for that. Again not a big deal and uh, we're gonna continue then into making the feet next. So in the pattern here we go. We're gonna start with the feet. We're gonna just start off with the other color like the snout color uh, just for the first three rounds and then we're gonna be switching over then from four to nine then just the regular and then we're gonna be sewing to the bottom of the body as pictured. So you wanna keep an eye on for that as well. So let's uh, continue then to do the feet. Let's begin to do the feet and what we're going to do is start off with your magic loop as you have been using the other snout color and this is also the heart color too. So you're just gonna secure it there. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna do six single crochets in the magic loop. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you know what to do at this point. You just need to pull up the loop. Let's position our stitch marker. Let's pull it shut and let's then add in um, um, the tapestry needle to secure it and then I'll see you and we'll begin round number two together. So let's begin round number two. We are actually gonna start shaping right now. So watch what we're going to do. We're just gonna take our time then. We're just gonna chain two. It will not count as a stitch and in the same one that you did the join you need to put in two double crochet. So one and two. The next stitch will be also two double crochet. So one and two. The next two stitches will each be a half to, uh, two double crochets or two half double crochets each. So the next two stitches are two half double crochets. Like that. And then it says the two single crochets um, in each of the next two. So we have one and two and then do the last one, one and two. And once you have that done then you've gone all the way around. So you can see it's a little oblong. That's what we're looking for and we're going to then just slip stitch it to the top of the first double crochet. Ignore that chain two. It's just a builder and then that will conclude off round number two. Let's begin round number three. Chain one and you're going to place in two single crochets in the first one. So one and two and then the next one is one single crochet by itself. So the repeat pattern then for round number three is there's gonna be two single crochets in the next one and then the next one is one by itself and I need you to do that all the way around. There's a total of 18 single crochets by the time you go around if you wanna take a, uh, a stab at counting those and making sure that you got the right counts. 
So just two into the first and then one into the next one after that. Please do that around for round number three. Okay, once you get around you're just gonna slip stitch. This is the end of the line for this color. So we're gonna switch then back to the main color of your gray. So this is the bottom of the foot section and then we're gonna continue. So just pull it through and weave it in a few sections and then we're gonna continue into round number four and five which will just be um, just regular single crochets and there's gonna be a total of 18 single crochets going around in a circle. So let's start off and let's begin round number four. So round number four just grabbing your next yarn just create a slip knot just to extra security and right where you kind of finished is where you wanna begin and making sure that there's only 18 in a round. Okay so just join it just chain one and then single crochet into the same one. So we want 18 around so one, two, three. Noticing I'm going up over top of the straggler. This is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And it looks like there's an extra stitch but it's not. But if that bothers you what you can just do is put the last uh, spacing and the last stitch together as a two together and then that'll hide that in. It's a little technique. It's, I use it quite often. So let's uh, begin round number five is just chain up one and then it's just one single crochet in each around. There's a total of 18 and I'll see you at the end of this round, round number five. So round number six is kind of an unusual one but if you look at the original do you see how it kind of bowls out like this? This is what we're gonna be doing next. So let's just take our time. Chain one and we're gonna single crochet the first two together for ones. You're gonna put the next two together and that's for a second time. The next two together that's the third time and the next two together that's the fourth time and the remaining four uh, ten stitches will each be a single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten and you're back to where you started. So we're just gonna move up the stitch marker and that was round number um, six and let's slip stitch to finish to the beginning. Okay so we're gonna do another shaping round. Okay round number seven. So we're just gonna chain up one and we're gonna put the first two together and then put the next two together just like that and then it says to put in one uh, single crochet in the next ten. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That's where we left off. Okay, so once we get that 10 in, that was round number seven. Let's just slip stitch to finalize. And rounds number eight and nine are the same as four and five. So four and five is just one single crochet in each and there is a total of 12 stitches going around now. So just chain up one, one single crochet in each of the 12. So this is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. That takes us around and I need you to do one more round of just a single crochets like that and then that will conclude off your leg. It's, it's kind of a short stubby leg, right? So do it one more time, just one single crochet in each, total of twelve and then uh, that's it and then we're gonna stop this and you can sew to the body as well. So just finishing up to the end of round number nine. 
So leave a long tail here to sew it to the body and now stuff it and then make sure then you feel the other one and I've already kind of demonstrated how I would attach it to the project using uh, stitch markers and then once you're satisfied with it then just sew it in a position. You can see the legs are kind of splayed out a little bit. You can decide what works for you. So um, you'll notice that once you stuff it then you'll see that the top layer you can kind of see that the foot is kind of showing up there and so you kind of want to do it so both are the same. So stuff these now and sew to your body. Okay like I did before I just set up the body so that it was sitting face up and then I just put it down and then I kind of looked where the rounds are and I attached it with um, just ties and to make sure that it looks actually pretty decent as I'm going. And then I'm gonna use the tails then just to circle around in order to get it to go. So the goal is here is to get that nice kind of bare shape of the legs kind of a uh, little bit splayed and it's gonna be quite awesome. You can also if you want to at this point too is you can you can sew on the the arms but I would kind of think about waiting until you have the head on so then you can position the arms perfectly. So let's sew on here because at, at this point you can turn the head anyway because it's just a matter of the feet going on. So sew on your legs and we'll be right back. Okay so my legs are sewn on. You can see that it looks pretty awesome and I didn't like totally overstuff them but I stuffed them enough so that it will keep itself stable. So you can see the back end here. <laughs> it almost like it needs a tattoo on the back or something. Okay so let's uh, continue and we just have one more element to do. Actually two more. We have a tail and a heart and let's begin the tail next. Let's begin to do the tail next. We're gonna do a magic loop. You know the routine at this point and we're gonna get that started. And make sure that you secure it as well. So once you get that ready then it's six single crochet in the loop. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay pull it up. Make sure you put your stitch marker in. Pull it tight. Secure it and then I'll see you on round number two. Once things are secured you slip stitch you're ready to go. Number two is just chain up one and it will be two single crochets in each of them all the way around. There's only six um, stitches so there will be a total of twelve. So one and one, two and two, three and three, four and four, five and five. And then finally six and six. Move up that stitch marker and then secure that um, slip stitch it and then we'll move on to round number three. Round number three is a very simple round. Let's just slip stitch it before I share that. So slip it. So number three is just a single crochet round. So just chain up one. So there's 12 stitches in a round. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve is at the stitch marker. We have one more round to do. It's very similar to the ear and slip stitch it before you continue. And then the final round is as follows. So it's chain up one and single crochet uh, two together in the first two and then one into the next. And then the next two are together and then one into the next and you're gonna do that all the way around. And your final one here will be in one into the last one here. And you're just gonna slip stitch and now you're just gonna apply a little bit of stuffing in this thing and you're going to apply it and sew it to the back of your, your body character. So that's it for that and I'll leave that with you. Just do what you need to do and attach it to your body and just leave this long tail so that you can sew it to the body when you're ready. When you go to sew to the, to the body you'll notice that the tail in the photograph it's part of the counter, counterbalance. So if this is the front it helps it from being able to sway so it's kind of like a tripod in that sense. So when you go to fasten this on if you put it up too high there's no counterbalance. So you wanna do it so that it's naturally going to rest so that when you go to apply the head when you're ready then it'll be part of the balance of that. So please secure that now. We're now gonna move on and create the easy little heart that's here. I don't know how easy it is but we will figure it out and let's begin to do that next 
and let's just grab our same color as the snout and the bottom of the feet and let's just finish this off. Okay, let's try this out. So we're gonna do a chaining of seven. I haven't practiced this so we'll <laughs> figure it out as we go and we're gonna just chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So now it's suggesting to us that to go second chain from the hook and one single crochet in each. So just go in the back of the loop. It just is easier. So we have one, we've got two, three, four, five, and six is the magic one here. So it says to turn this and it says chain one and one single crochet in each of the stitches. So there's a total of six at the end. So we have one, two, three, four, five and six. And now it says as in the second row. So just turn your work and chain one and one single crochet in each. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And now it says rows four, five and six, one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. So chain up one. So just go into the first three. So one, Oh, I see what they're doing. Two and three and then turn your work. Chain one and then just one, two and three. Sarah's right. This is easy. Chain up one and one single crochet in each and then row seven is one single crochet in each of four, five, six. So we'll chain up one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. There we go and then do not turn. So we're not gonna turn so we're just gonna um, chain up one, one single crochet in each of the next three stitches but what you're, what we're doing here is that we're gonna continue down the side. So we're just gonna just evenly space it around to give it the heart shape. And then that's what we're gonna do. Go right up over top of that straggler you might as well. So that's the bottom of your heart and then just in the bottom of the heart what I would do is that um, oh she has that single crochet. Uh, chain one, one single crochet at the bottom of the heart. It gives it a bit of a point and then just working your way up. So you're just tracing it around for making the heart. And then as it comes over the top you're gonna have the heart shape and then you're gonna go down the valley. Okay and just I would slip st uh, stitch in the middle of it and then work your way up. And then slip stitch it to the beginning. <laughs> it's pretty cute. Okay, so leave a long tail and you're gonna sew that to your body just like you would anything else and I'm gonna leave that to you. Just position it onto the chest and we'll continue that from that point. Okay, so now that my heart's on, it's not the most perfect thing I've ever done but um, I'm happy with that and I'm gonna now sew on the arms to the neckline here and then I'm gonna pop on the head. So I'm gonna get my arms all lined up and then I will position my head then after that's done. So I'm just gonna sew these so it's kind of flat to the top here, the rim and then plop on the head to do that. So uh, you may also want to kind of position it so that it's gonna naturally go forward in front of the leg. So if you go down then it will be behind. You can probably force it but you may wanna think about that in advance. So it's up to you. Okay, so now I have everything in position. Everything is naturally falling where it should, thank God. <laughs> I'm known for ruining amigurumi big time. So I have my everything in. So now I'm gonna grab my head and I'm going to tie on, oh my God, that is so cool. I'm going to tie on the head first, making sure that I get it done. 
I'm really quite happy with this. So I'm gonna tie on my head first and then I'm gonna sew on using the neck section here and then this bear is complete. Oh my god it's very cute. <laughs> so I've done amigurumi like this before. So if your bear is slouching, so say it was wanting to fall forward, what you can do on the back side here is if you go down a little bit further than you should, then what it does is it causes it to squat more giving it more support. So that's kind of stuff that you can do if it's not working out to your satisfaction. Also depending on your usage too you could put chopsticks or even plastic straws inside uh, these. I've done that before too uh, with uh, Antonio the mouse that I did and uh, in order to keep him stable because sometimes um, the necks are a little bit too thin and therefore they don't support themselves when they are doing that. So I'm just going all the way around and this is actually looking pretty awesome. Almost like he needs a little winter scarf or something. <laughs> so I'm just, I've actually gone all the way around at this point and everything's good to go. So once I'm satisfied with that I can just, uh, just tie it in. I almost wanna do him a little scarf. And once I tie it then I can just weave it in and out of the work. A total of three times you might wanna do that towards the back. You can decide what works for you. This is uh, after doing the llama. <laughs> this has been a walk in the park. Um, I'm not using into amigurumi as far as making it very often. Um, I tend to screw it up but the more times I do it the more I learn. So it's one of those items that you know it's kind of a work in progress if, even for your own self to be able to do and that is it and um, just shape things that you think you need to shape and now it's good to go as a gift and I am pretty excited about it. So um, let's go see what Daniel thinks and I'm gonna go show him next.